I just got my confirmation from my surgeon that I can have my surgery as soon as next week, but after fighting with my insurance since January, I unfortunately will not have help from my insurance to get this surgery. I am determined to make this happen. I just have to ask for help. Gender affirming healthcare is life giving and life saving for so many people. If I did not transition, I would not be alive today. I was connected with a transgender surgeon in Miami. Her name is Dr. Doback, and she is like the queen of BBLs. She literally trained with the man who invented the BBL. Like she's a little older and she's so talented. Anyway, I got connected with her. They're giving me a little discount and I am now flying to Miami. They happen to have a cancellation the same day, May 5th. So I'm getting surgery with a transgender surgeon, which makes me feel so much better. Like I feel so good about it now because I was feeling really anxious and like not comfortable for some reason. And now I finally like get it. Like everything has fallen into place and it's working out for the best. And I'm just like beside myself we're literally four days out and um I was trying to get my labs to like do my blood work make sure like my iron levels and like I'm like approved for surgery like I'm fit for surgery physically and I have been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting since Friday to get these and it's now Monday or Tuesday and I'm like I literally leave for Miami tomorrow morning like I need to get my labs done so I can be approved for surgery, like the final step. And today I'm on hold for two hours and I finally get a hold of the office and they're like, oh, your surgery is May 5th, 2024. You don't need to do your labs yet. Like we'll do that next year. And I was like, no, like literally ask the surgeon, like I'm having surgery this Friday. And they were like, oh, we put in the year wrong or something on the computer. So... <laughs> I almost had a little heart attack. I was like, wait, no, no. It was their mistake. I finally got my lab orders. So I'm going to go and do that today. Surgery is Friday this year, not next year. <laughs> they are really, the universe is really trying me, testing my patience and my faith. And um, <laughs> it's, it's happening. I am in good hands. It's all working out. I am so excited. I had to cut my nails short for surgery. I've, I have not had nails this short in so long, but they're so cute and they're giving like Barbie. Wow, I have so many feelings. <sighs> so I just finished at LabCorp to get my blood work done just to make sure I'm fit for surgery or whatever. Turns out, <laughs> My insurance doesn't cover LabCorp. My insurance is with Quest Labs or whatever. So I had to pay out of pocket for my labs. There's another like $700. So just always remember that even when you think you've paid for everything, there's always gonna be additional costs. That's why when you see trans people fundraise for our surgeries, they're hella expensive. Insurance is a nightmare. And healthcare in the U.S. is a nightmare because even when you think you've paid off your surgeon, your travel costs, your hotel or your recovery house and all of your supplies and all of your like clothing and everything, there's still going to be random other costs like your lab work or like your post-op massages that you have to pay out of pocket for as well, which is like another couple of thousand. It all adds up. So like... Just plan for that and pay trans people. <laughs> so in Miami, we found this little treat shop called Wet Dreams. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hi, Miami. It's the night before surgery and I'm exhausted. We had a long day at the beach and I had my pre-op appointment today. I met Dr. Dobak and she's so nice, literally so sweet to me. Um, 
they didn't receive one of my test results from LabCorp. So I had a last minute, like go to LabCorp and like get a rush order on one more test result, but they got them and all is good. It was just a little stressful in the moment. Um, I'm all washed up. I stopped eating and drinking. I ended my night with some Arnica tea and a little shower with my baby. And he helped me replace all of my jewelry with plastic jewelry. So I'm like all like, I have all this plastic jewelry everywhere. <laughs> um, so we're going to go to bed. Good night. Good morning. I just showered with my little antiseptic, washed my hair, and got dressed, ready to go. I took a melatonin so I could actually sleep, which was the best decision. Um, I woke up like an hour before my alarm though and could not fall asleep. So I've been up for a while. Um, it's like, what, four or five a.m. my time. Um, <laughs> But here we go. I'm a little nervous. I'm so hungry. My stomach's a wreck. My body is so confused about what time it is and when we eat, when we sleep, what we do. Um, but here we go. I'm really excited. Today's the day. Here we go. I got the good tour on. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Rose Montoya. I'm here at Dr. Dobok's office. I'm so excited to get body feminization surgery, but just wait until you see my results. But we're doing some fabulous surgery here. Best wishes to you all. Made it to day three. Last night was a really rough night, but yesterday was a really good day. Day two was really easy. We did our lymphatic, lymph, lymphatic, how the fuck do you say that word? Lymphatic. Lymphatic drainage massaging, and it changed my life. I was a new woman. Yesterday after my massage, I was like walking around the whole house. I showered, I felt so good. Um, but then last night we tried to switch to Tylenol for the night and it was not good. I woke up in so much pain. I was hurting a lot and my neck was hurting, I had a headache. I woke up with a headache this morning, but when we switched back to Percocets at like five in the morning, I finally slept. And we just had breakfast after my massage this morning and I feel so much better. Definitely sore, very gassy, definitely constipated, but things are looking good. My results are looking good. I mean, every time I walk by the mirror, I'm like freaking out. It looks so good. I've cried so many times. <laughs> my care team is so incredible. I'm so lucky. I have never seen my hands this swollen before. Like it's hard to even close my hands. My wrist is huge. <laughs> like I can't even put my hand around my wrist. It's so swollen. <laughs> Right now I have a diaper on because my faja is being washed. This is a, I don't even know. Yeah, this is my diaper. Oh my God, the silhouette though. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ass, 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 ass. <laughs> it looks like I'm wearing Mugler. The like Mugler tights. Even though it's just my faja. <laughs> <laughs> just taking out the braids because they're a mess but my hair looks cute right now <laughs> it's a dumpy for me we had our first bowel movement and i feel like a new woman i could literally cry i'm so happy <laughs> that feels so good Day four, just showered, like a real shower. I'm so tired, but I almost slept through the night. What time did we go to bed, babe? Like one, maybe one. And then, because we napped so much. Hi, good morning. And um, didn't wake up until six. So that was really nice. 
but I definitely woke up in some pain, but I'm feeling good now. Just tired. We're going on an adventure. <laughs> Getting sized for a custom Faha. This is, this is the vibe. My whole life I thought I had a short torso, but the straps of the Faha say otherwise. My torso is too long and it cuts me up. So I'm so glad we got a custom one today because we're switching to that ASAP. We're here at Post Up. Yes. Come to greet me. made it to our gate that was a journey i got so fucking nauseous from the car ride i think and then like just the sitting and standing and waiting and going through tsa like they wheeled me in a wheelchair all the way up to the scanner and then i just walked through the scanner and then sat down but just that small amount of walking i thought i was gonna fall over and throw up i didn't i took an anti-nausea pill and i'm alive we went to the bathroom it took like 25 minutes and we're on our way. We're doing this. So I am finally back home, as you can see. Thank you so much for all of your love and support, all your well wishes. This first week of recovery has been tough. Definitely the most challenging recovery of my life. Um, I experienced more pain than I ever thought I could tolerate. <laughs> but um, I am home safe and sound after a very, very challenging flight home. <laughs> but I woke up well rested. I only had to wake up twice throughout the night and I feel really good today. I'm in a really great mood. Y'all are not ready for this reveal. The body is bodying. <laughs> so get ready. But I just wanted to come on and say thank you. I love you. I'm doing good. She's alive and well. Oh my God, I just opened all of my PR packages for the month. The way that these Savage X Fenty pants fit me, I'm literally obsessed. Like, what? That's my body. That's my body. <laughs> I can't even. Oh my god, today's the first day I've worn makeup since surgery. I mean, it's been like 11 days, 12 days. And so <laughs> I'm exhausted, literally just doing my makeup and filming a couple of videos that are like sponsored for Pride and stuff. Like, I am exhausted. I'm so winded. I am going to eat dinner and then probably take a nap. <laughs> this is absolutely disgusting. Wash your fajas, girls. officially two weeks post-op and i'm starting to feel so much better like so much more normal um i think yesterday was the first day i woke up like without any pain which was amazing like i actually slept through the night last night this morning i did wake up with lower back pain but like no like surgery related pain really um i washed my like faja that's like custom made last night and so um, I had to wear my surgery faja, which is smaller and definitely like is way too tight on my rib cage. So I typically when I'm wearing that one, my ribs end up in some pain. And especially when I sleep through the night in that, um, it's not as comfortable as the size large. 
the size large Vaja is the most comfortable. Um, I do typically like wear it on the third row now, um, at least to my belly button. And then that's about where my rib cage starts is at my belly button. So then I go to the second row for a couple and then on level one all the way up my ribs because I realized even though I do still have some swelling, uh, my rib cage is large and so it's kind of painful to put all of that compression on my ribs and so I told my surgeon and she was like that's kind of not normal um so make sure yeah you're taking breaks from your faha and don't wear it too tight if it's hurting your ribs so luckily I've been feeling a lot better since I realized that um but it took me a long time to kind of regain all of that sensation to even tell that like that was what's going on but I'm um, I just woke up from a nap so I do still have some swelling in my face you can see my eyes are kind of puffy right now but most of the swelling is gone I can see my knuckles on my hands but my fingers are still a little bit swollen I still like I wear um a gucci ring on my ring finger on my right hand every single day and I still can't wear it like I could probably fit it on but it's tight so I can tell that I'm still a little bit swollen in my body. So definitely still doing my lymphatic uh, massages, which is helping get rid of all of that extra fluid in my body. But um, the body is giving. <laughs> the body is bodying. Like I've been wearing my boards a lot, um, like during the daytime at least, but this waist, these hips, <laughs> this ass, <laughs> like, the body is bodying. Definitely so excited to have most of all of that swelling gone. I can definitely like start to see the real figure. And my tummy is flat, flat. Like it's definitely still swollen. It's still very sensitive. But I also woke up today and realized most of the bruising is gone, which is amazing. Like you can still see like, oh, some Arnica cream. I do still like have some decent bruising here and like on the back like under my left thigh is still a lot of bruising. But other than that, there's no more bruising on my torso, none on my hips or my butt. There is a little bit of bruising on my arms, but that's because I have to wear the KT tape um, until, well, today is the last day I have to wear it, but it's still on, so I'm just gonna kind of let it naturally fall off because it hurts to peel off tape, so. I might eventually peel it off, but we're gonna leave it on a little bit longer um, than the recommended five days at a time uh, because it's still on. Usually, like the last two times it fell off by this point. So we're gonna just keep it on for a little bit longer. Um, today I can finally attempt to sit down with my BBL pillow, which is what I was just kneeling on. That way, all of my weight goes on my thighs and then I have to sit on a chair with a back. That way my back and my thighs are taking all of the weight and my ass is just kind of like floating. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited. I want to eat dinner at the dinner table because I've been eating all of my meals on my bed and just kind of kneeling and resting on the bed. That way not all of the weight is on my knees because my knees are exhausted and still not as swollen as they were, but my knees are still a little more swollen than the rest of my body. I've been going on walks every day. There's like a really cute little like park and community garden, like four blocks down from my apartment. So it's been really nice to have that, to be able to walk there, have some fresh air every day. Um, I don't go alone. I always ask someone to walk with me because I still don't want to walk that far alone yet. Um, but it's nice to like actually get out <laughs> of the house and do things. Even if I do look a little silly and like my faha and everything, especially when I have my boards in, <laughs> I look kind of lumpy and weirdly proportioned. But um, it's been it's been nice um, to like feel a little bit more normal. It is frustrating, however, feeling more normal and not being able to do a lot of things. Like it's still hard to lift anything more than like five, 10 pounds. It's still like just impossible. <laughs> and I still can't, it's like really uncomfortable to bend over. So instead I kind of squat or, you know, just like go down to a kneeling position. 
Um, I don't like bending over. My tummy is still definitely healing. Um, and so I still kind of have to have help showering. But um, other than that, I'm pretty independent. You know, I just can't lift heavy things and I can't bend over. But otherwise, I can cook for myself now. I can use the restroom by myself now, which is the best feeling. I can get dressed and undressed alone, which is so freeing. It feels so good. It's all those little things that really add up and like make you feel so much better as you're healing. Like putting this on is certainly not easy, <laughs> but I can do it alone now, <laughs> which feels incredible. Um, I do sometimes have to take some breaks and there are still moments like if I'm in pain or if I'm like really tired, then I have to ask for help occasionally. But for the most part, I'm pretty independent now, which is incredible. We're two weeks post-op, and that means that I can sit down using my BBL pillow for one hour at a time. Ugh, I feel like a normal human. <laughs> it's so weird because all of the weight is like on my, um, on my thighs, and then my back, and then my butt just kind of levitates. <laughs> So it feels a little silly, but it feels really good to finally sit down. Oh my God. So I decided for the one hour today to sit down, I'm going to have dinner. My wonderful partner brought some sushi home. So I'm going to sit down at the dinner table like a normal human for the first time. <laughs> two weeks post-op and going on two walks a day now to the park. <laughs> feeling great. I just had my 11th massage. We're down to once a week now. And oh my God, it felt so amazing. It was actually relaxing and calming and I almost fell asleep during it. And my body feels so good and it looks so good right now. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> officially one month post-op and first thing in the morning my face is still swollen <laughs> like sitting or sleeping face down my face gets so puffy so that's still a thing but we have no more bruising I am in virtually no pain I'm sometimes like I'll wake up in pain um, and I typically take pain meds to help me sleep just in case. But other than that, it's just like lower back pains from laying on my stomach all the time. So I try to get up and be much more active because I have way more energy now. And so I'm feeling really good. Like I can sit down with my pillow for an hour a day or like an hour at a time. And so I've been able to like go out to eat and like see friends. So I'm not like at 100 yet but I am starting to feel really good. I'm also allowed to uh, be intimate with my partner again. <laughs> so that's really nice. I've definitely been missing that. And, you know, the things that I feel like they don't tell you is going to the bathroom is going to suck, especially number two. <laughs> going number two, I have to sit on this. Um, it basically looks like a foam roller for your muscles. So I have to squat on that and my butt can't like touch the seat. So just my thighs are, so my butt is kind of floating. So it feels weird because in my head, I'm like, where is this going to go? But it's never been, it's always worked, <laughs> but it feels weird and it's uncomfortable. And like for the first like two weeks, it took everything out of me. Now it's like, I'm finally okay, but it's still not fun. And peeing is still not great either because taking all of this off is just not easy. Um, but there is like a zipper like in the front that goes all the way from the front to the back. So like, usually I just stand and pee. And so like, it's recommended that people who cannot stand to pee buy like a uh, SDP, like a stand to pee, like a little device. 
And so most people do that. So I'm really thankful I don't have to do that. But I will say having a zipper on either side of you and it being compression, it's so painful. Like that first week, my genitals were so bruised, like black and blue all around my genitals and onto my genitals. Like they were not happy with me for the first two weeks. And it, I'm still in pain, like, like maybe not pain, but like still a lot of discomfort because they are also being very compressed. And then like getting them in and out, I have to like avoid this zipper. And when it's out, like there's a zipper on either side, like chomping on it, you know what I mean? Like it's, no one, no one warned me about that. So I'm warning you because it's the worst part. <laughs> like besides like the pain the first week and besides like laying on my stomach all the time, not getting to like sleep normal, that's probably the third worst part because <laughs> those are definitely the worst too. But um, I'm in really good mood walking around, fully independent. Um, so I'm feeling great. I'm so happy. Um, two more weeks until I can stop wearing this 24-7. Very excited to not have to wear this faha because we're on row three now. So like basically as tight as it can go. About to order my stage three faha. This is my stage two. So stage three is a little bit tighter, a little bit more compressed. And that will be my last one. So I think I'm going to get a nude one. That way I can like wear it under clothes and stuff and like a thinner strap. So it's more incognito or whatever, but I'll still kind of switch off to this one every once in a while, but yeah, I'm in a great mood. We are officially seven months post-op. So I thought that I would give y'all some updates since then because June was a whirlwind of a month as I'm sure most of you know. So I didn't do any filming. I was completely out of commission. I had to focus on my mental health. So <laughs> um, the second month of recovery was really difficult on my mental health, but that's completely unrelated to my physical transition. I'm so thankful that, you know, I had an incredible support system throughout all of that because <laughs> doing that alone would have been impossible, especially with the media attack that happened against me. Um, you know, it was still challenging to have to sleep on my stomach for another four weeks. I still had to sleep in my faha or just like wear it for, you know, 12 hours a day. So I decided to sleep in it and then just kind of hang out in it in like the morning and um, late night. And so that was definitely not fun. And I did still have to wear my faha to some extent for the next like, you know, few months. Um, I no longer wear it, though I probably should be wearing it every so often just to kind of keep that hourglass shape um, really snatched. Honestly, did I follow every rule after the second month? No. Did it make, you know, me any less happy with my results? No. Would my results maybe be a little bit better had I worn my faha even more after the second month? Probably. But honestly, I couldn't be happier. At this point, it just feels like a natural part of my body the thighs match and you know, like almost no one can tell that I've had anything done. People who knew me before definitely can tell that there's a difference, <laughs> but it looks very natural. Like no one assumes that I've had surgery. Most people think I've worked out a lot or, you know, just gained some weight or whatever. I've stayed in contact with my surgeon. In fact, last month was her birthday. I wished her a happy birthday. And she, you know, said that I was one of her favorite clients, that she's so happy and honored to have gotten to work on my body, which was so sweet of her to say. While most of June I stayed at home, um, July and August I got to go to the river, I got to go to the beach. I got to, you know, go swimming in the pool and in hot tubs. All in all, this was definitely the most challenging recovery I've ever had to go through, both physically and mentally. Part of that, of course, is due to external factors, but a large part of it was just, you know, being so limited in my physical ability, you know, not being able to wipe after going to the restroom on my own for that first week was so humbling. <laughs> and, you know, 
not being able to sleep or sit down like normal because I am such a back sleeper throughout the night. I like to cuddle and lay on my side while I'm falling asleep and then sleep on my back. So not being able to do either of that was challenging, but absolutely worth it. And what's funny is after that second month, uh, like the full eight weeks of no lying down on my back or sitting, you know, for any more than like an hour or whatever was allotted at the time, I eventually got used to it. Do I like sleeping on my stomach? No, I hate it. But can I lay down on my stomach for so much longer now? Like, can I hang out on my bed on my stomach for an hour or two? Yeah. Can I cuddle like in new positions so much more comfortably? Yes. I think that this surgery had one of the strongest effects on my euphoria. I think besides like my breast augmentation, like just having an immediate, you know, like curvy body, um, you know, just like that physical embodiment of femininity is just so exciting for me. It gives me, you know, just so much happiness. I feel aligned in my body more than ever before. And ever since I've fully recovered, I've been wearing just a completely different kind of sense of style. And it's really fun to like get to go shopping and wear clothes that fit my new body. It, it was unfortunate to have to donate all of my pants and so many of my dresses. The only pants that fit me now are pants that were baggy on me then, and now they're like really tight. <laughs> These are my new favorite jeans. This is the new body. Like I just love, you know, standing on one leg and just popping my hip out. Like I don't even have to, like I used to dramatically pop my hip like this for photos. Now I just feel like it's just ridiculous when I do that. Of course, from the side and from the back, it just looks so good. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. But let's look at it in a bikini. This is the Trans Pride bikini from Tuck It Up, which is a trans-owned, trans-focused, um, like underwear and bikini tucking garment company. I love the Trans Pride flag colors. And I especially love how my body looks in it. It's just so euphoric. Every single transgender person deserves to have gender euphoria and to, you know, affirm their body in whatever ways feel best to them. You deserve this feeling. Thank you, Tuck It Up, for sending me this. Like, that's my body, girl. <laughs> girl. I'm so thankful and, you know, so... Like, I have to just thank all of you for supporting me, for being here, you know, for helping me have this career that's allowed me to afford my medical transition. I recognize the privilege that it is, and, you know, that's why I do so much education. That's why I do, you know, the work that I do. That's why I'm a nonprofit board member um, with Audio Rising, helping people afford their transitions, doing giveaways and surgeries and everything, like surgery grants and scholarships and everything. Gender affirming care is life-saving and it should be easily accessible. It should be affordable. It should, well, it should be free. Let's be real. We deserve free healthcare. You know, I think that to live, to exist, should not have to cost you anything. You're a human being, you deserve to be here and you deserve to be fully you. You deserve to have your health and your mental health taken care of. But I digress, you know, the fight goes on for gender affirming care in the United States, but I will continue to fight that fight because I know just how meaningful it is. Just to recap, I had a body feminization surgery, also known to most cis people as a BBL, um, with Dr. Dobok in Miami, Florida. Um, she's a transgender surgeon. She's incredible. Her entire team is incredible. And I stayed at a recovery house with Nurse Joseph Cares for You. Nurse Joe, I love you. Like, your team was also incredible. The food, the massages, the, um, like, amenities at the house, everything. I could not have asked for a better team to help take care of me. I love y'all so much. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Should I like angle? What do you want to tell the trans youth? That YouTube can have an ass like that. <laughs>